Hey guys, so in this video, let me give you another tip. Now this is also related to AWS uh, account management and user management. In the first tip I gave, uh, I uh, told you guys not to spin up any resources in the AWS management account or the initial account that you sign up for. Always use AWS organization service to create multiple AWS account for your different uh, uh, environment like let's say production, dev and test um, and then spin up those resources in those AWS accounts so that you can use SCPs uh, to enforce different policies among these uh, AWS accounts. But the next problem is, how do we manage your users among these AWS accounts? Because that's going to be challenging. Now that you have multiple AWS accounts, uh, if you are going ahead with uh, AWS IAM service to create users and assign permission, then you need to log into these accounts separately and create IAM users, for example, in the production account, you create IAM users, uh, again, you log out and log into the, um, the dev account, so on and so forth. It's administration overhead. Plus, when you create IAM users and assign permission through IAM policies, these credentials are long term. That means if these credentials are somehow leaked into the internet, whoever get hold of it can access these resources indefinitely. Unless, of course, if you disable or delete these IAM users. So what's the best approach? So the best approach or the best recommendation uh, from AWS is to use identity federation. So what does that mean? That means you may be already having some uh, identity management uh, software in your company already. Let's say uh, you have an Active Directory and you are managing your users in the Active Directory in your company already. So in that case, you can easily federate uh, access to AWS for all your Active Directory users. You can do that or else maybe if you are just starting off you don't have a proper uh, company setup and you don't have uh, active directory or any external identities you can still use identity federation uh, using this service called aws sso i think they uh, recently changed that name now the service is called aws Identity center i believe so how you should uh, use that service First, you log into the management uh, account. Now, this is a, one of the uh, few places where we, you would use this initial AWS account that you sign up for or the management AWS account. Log into that, go to AWS SSO or the identity center, and then you will see a similar setup just like in IAM where you can create your users, groups, and permission sets. So, there are three main entities users, groups, and permission sets. So you can either connect to existing identity, pro identity platform with AWS SSO or else you can create your users just like in AWS IAM in AWS SSO itself. So let's say you create the users in AWS SSO. So the next thing is the permissions, right? So uh, you can use permission sets for that matter. So you go to the permission sets, you create a permission set, let's say you are creating a, a permission set with the manage permission uh, policy power use access. So anybody uh, using that permission set will have access to AWS except for let's say user management and so on and so forth that doesn't allow by the power user policy. You can create that or, or else uh, you can use these manage, manage policies or else you can create your own policies and create a permission set. The beauty of permission set, however, compared to IAM permission, is that you can set session duration. Meaning that uh, whenever users uh, use this permission uh, to log into AWS, you can set how long these uh, tokens are going to be valid. So how long these sessions is going to be valid. You can set hours, let's say one hour, two hour, three hour, eight hours, so on and so forth. Now one of the uh, recommendation from me is, is that if you are setting uh, these permission set for your developers set it somewhere around uh, I don't know six hours or eight hours so when they log in uh, to AWS SSO login uh, and um, at, at their username and the password uh, and uh, get those uh, credentials access keys and secret access key they can set them up in their local machine so one, once they set them up they can use it until the end of the day if you set it, if you set the uh, session token uh, for eight hours or so, and but uh, after that, let's say at night or so, they won't be able to use it. If they want to use it, they have to come back to AWS SSO login and re-authenticate themselves. By the way, uh, there's a separate login for AWS SSO, the Identity Center. It's not the same uh, AWS Management Console login. There's a separate login page, and you have a URL uh, as well. Yeah. So uh, the beauty of it, like I mentioned. 
uh, if somehow one of these developers laptop is get stolen and somebody try to use these credentials uh, to access AWS resources that's not going to work because these credentials are already expired on top of that uh, you can easily add MFA the multi-factor authentication for your uh, users as well you can easily enable that and uh, in AWS SSO there's a, another um, another uh, menu point where you can list all the AWS account that you have in your AWS organization and easily you can go into this AWS account and associate users or groups first um, let's say that you have a set of developers and you put them into a developer group so you can go into the development AWS account click on that in the hierarchy and then go into that and associate a developer group in the next option you have to select the permission set that you are uh, providing to that developer group. Let's say that you said uh, you have a permission set created with the power user policy, uh, power user access, you set that permission set. Likewise, uh, it's an easy wizard. Once you're done with that, then your users can easily use AWS SSO login to get access to AWS. So that's the tip number two, guys. Uh, I'll see you in another tip. Thanks. Bye.